Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again, midweek Wednesday. Uh, today's video, real quick, I wanted to get to it. It's going to be a, um, a little bit of instruction on how to use split dies and what split dies are for threading. Uh, there it really isn't a lot of this information on YouTube. I wanted to get it out there and I promised I would. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, let's start off by talking about, we're not gonna be talking, we talk about taps and dies. Today, we're not gonna be talking about taps. A tap threads the inside of a hole like this nut. You would use a tap to thread that. And a die is used to thread the outside here, the threads on the outside. This is an example of a tap, of a beautiful, absolutely beautiful tap. Big money tap. This is a Pratt & Whitney, 15, 16 by 12 threads per inch. Look at the taper on here. And it's such a long taper, such a beautiful tap. You don't find these too much anymore, but a very nicely made tap. What we're going to be talking about is dies, okay? And dies, um, when you do threads on a bolt or a threaded rod or all thread or anything, there's different ways of making or forming the threads. The most popular is what they call roll threading. And roll threading is where you have two pieces of metal that have grooves cut in it, and they go like this, back and forth. And to put the roll thread onto a bolt or a rod or anything, you would place it in here, and this would roll it like that and compress the metal and make it look like a thread, like this. Now, roll threading has a lot of advantages. It's almost like forging. It's very strong. You're not interrupting the grain of the threads. And it's the preferred way to do it. It's also cost effective, but uh, not everybody does it, uh, especially for larger bolts, things like that. It depends on the machines and whatnot. And what we do in the shop here, a lot of times what we have to do is cut the thread. Now, typically there are a couple ways to cut a thread. Uh, the most common way for a machinist is to put the rod into a lathe and have a single point bit come up and go back and forth and take bits of metal off here as this is turning until you get a beautiful thread on there. That is called single point threading because you're using the single point. Now, not all of us uh, have a lathe that can do uh, threading. With me, my personal thing is there's so many gears to change to get different thread pitch, it's just a hassle. So some of us will go the route of the die. And a die is a way of cutting thread on a rod. Now, there are different, very many different dies starting off from, uh, from the mid-1800s to now. They've really changed a lot on the way they do. Now, many years ago, almost all your tap and die sets look similar to this. Uh, they were adjustable dies, right? The taps haven't changed too much. They're pretty much still the same. But the, uh, the dies were all split dies, adjustable. They had die holders, which is here, uh, guides, uh, and then they had replaceable uh, teeth over here. That would actually, those are the dies that cut the threads. And that was predominant in a lot of different sets. And then, you know, through the years, they tried to the cost and, and cut costs and things like that and make uh, sets more affordable to the average person. And then they started coming out with sets that look like this here, which is your common sets today. Totally uh, does the same job, more or less, but there's a difference. And I'm going to tell you the difference now between this is called a solid die and this is called a split die because you see it's split here. Uh, or And this is like an adjustable die. See, this has two halves. So what's the difference between and, and do they do anything different? And wh why are there so many? That's what I was asking. Myself. Now, for many years, most companies used a, what they call a round die. You see, it's round in here. And you would have a die handle, which is this, or, or what's called a die stock. Anytime you talk about this, a die stock. And the die would fit into the die stock and you would, you would use it this way. Now... Um, the good die stocks, the larger ones, usually have three screws on the top because a lot of them, a lot of the dies had three dimples. See, that's a dimple there. And they might have had one, two, and then the middle one here, you would use the top th uh, screw for. Now, it all depends, and there are so many different makes and models, but basically, they all do the same thing, and I'm going to tell you what that is. Now, an adjustable die, the reason that dies are adjustable and have this split here, which you would say it doesn't make much sense, 
But uh, the reason they do that is because when you're going to cut a thread on something, especially hard material, if you put it in a lathe, you're going to make a bunch of passes until you get that thread deep enough that the nut will fit on there. Those are called cuts, right? Well, when you have a threaded, an adjustable die, you can loosen this up, opening it up just a hair. It will be easier to get that thread started. You back it off. You tighten it up a little bit. That's the equivalent of making multiple passes, multiple cuts. Your dies last longer. The uh, the product comes out better. The cut comes out better because you're not trying to hog it off. And also, you won't do any damage to your teeth because that's a lot of material. If you don't have a adjustable die and you have a solid die like they make today, it's a lot of material you're trying to take off at once. Another reason for an adjustable die is as these teeth in the die wear down, they're not going to cut as deep as they did when they were new. You can tighten this up a little bit and get the proper cut on there. Again, this is for precision uh, cutting. Now, if you use a solid die like this, now there's no way to adjust this. So when you put this on, these are going to cut the thread. Now, some not, we're not talking about thread chasers here. That's a whole different thing. A thread chaser is meant to restore threads, and, and they also came in a hex style. But I'm talking about the regular dies that they make today that look like this. That's meant to cut a thread, but the problem is they won't last as long because the fact that they're non-adjustable, and you're putting a lot of strain on these teeth and whatnot. So these... Like all, these are disposable just like these were disposable. You can't resharpen them. They were meant to be replaced after so long. Now, unlike these chasing dies that are shown here, hex dies do come in cutting styles also, not just chasing. But the main thing is that you have to remember to get a high-speed steel die, not the carbon steel, in order to successfully cut threads using these type of dies. Now, let me show you the beauty of these old Greenfield tap and die dies, why they're so much superior than a lot of the stuff you see today. Now, first of all, here is the uh, die holder, okay? So when you put these, these are the teeth. Now, these, these are pretty much expensive and still available today. You could still buy these from Greenfield tap and die. Now, the first thing you do is you look here and you'll see that one side here on the on the left, now it's on the right, you can see it's tapered. That's where your, uh, your stock is going to come in from this way because you're going to start with the open, more open area. So there, so you got to make sure that's towards the bottom. All these dies had serial numbers so that they were matched. You can see here H711, H711. That faces the bottom. So you pr plus, place this into here with that facing the bottom on both sides. And then what you do is you're going to put the keeper in and the guide, which is this piece here. Now, if you notice this guide, what this does, as you can see it says 7 16 What this will do when you put this in here, this will keep the rod going straight. The hardest part, the threading, is getting a straight thread on here. And these guides, which you don't have on any of these button dies, makes it so much easier to thread. Let me put it together and show you how it works. Now, this die is at its most open. You can see here the back of the, the die is against the die holder, you see? And you see this little line here? That little line, and there's another one there. Once you thread that, you make one pass onto your material. Then what you would do is you would give a couple turns of the screw here in and move this closer to here until you make a couple passes until you get this end lines up with that line. You see how the end of the die is lined up with that line now? And that should give you the proper thread for 7 16 by 20 threads per inch. You do it both sides as you're making the passes, you see? Now you're not putting a lot of strain on the threads of the, of the die because you're taking little cuts. Now, if I tried to just tap this on a piece of stock, especially if it's hard stock, it would do a lot of damage to, and a lot of people ruin their dies by trying to take too big of a cut. So that's what adjustable dies are for, and that's why they're superior to a 
a standard now, depending die. on the die that you have you'll have different ways to adjust it now most of them have a slotted screw uh, on one side here you take your screwdriver you put it into the screw and you loosen it up until you see there's it's just a push screw there just like a, like a what they call a grub screw you see that now this is at its most uh this is at its most closed because uh Again, it's only meant to open it up. Now, if you want to open it a little bit, you push on the screw, and you can see I'm opening up a little bit, opening up. Now, you don't want to haul it. That screw's too small. You're really not going to be able to, but you don't want to go crazy on this and break the die because that's a weak area here, which you can see sometimes. But I just opened it enough to make this start much easier. Then, with every pass, give it a half a turn, do another pass, give it a half a turn until you're all the way, until this is all the way out like that and it's you see that there's no more touching so that's how you use one with a screw in it now some of them have the three dimples i was telling you or two dimples one here one here and the top one you would use your die uh your die stock the good ones like i said have three uh set screws in it and what you do is you start off by loosening these two and tightening this one that'll spread the die and then eventually you loosen this one up and tighten the other two and that'll close the die. So that's how adjustable dies work. Very we set simple. up a quarter by 28 die in the die stock. Okay, now you can see here, this is the backing of the guide. Now, obviously this guide was drilled out. They probably needed it for the 516s. It didn't have the bright guide, so they drilled this out. But this should fit very snug over here so that it allows you to not see it's wiggling right now it shouldn't it should fit very snug so this piece needs to be replaced however uh what you would do is you put this down here on the guide we have the teeth that is most wide open okay and then we're going to start the thread you want to keep this this has to be level and this guide will help keep it level unfortunately the guide is is messed up so we're going to have to do this kind of by eye but we turn this down i'm using aluminum just to show you real quick we're going to turn this down. The teeth are in its most open, meaning it's going to be a very light cut. This is quarter by 28. Look how easy this is. One finger. You see what we're doing? We're cutting that down because it's a light cut. Now, we'll back that off. Let me show you what that cut looks like. Now, there's the threads we just cut. Here's a quarter by 28 nut. And you can see we can't get this to start because we the dies were all the way open. Now we have to take this out, close the dies up a little bit, and then I'll show you we should make a better cut. But that's what you would do if you had hard material. Okay, here's our second pass on the same thread. Now, because we have it already threaded, this should match up perfectly with the original threads that we had on there just once we get it locked. And there we go. Thread this down. Secondary pass. Let me tighten this up. And let me pass it down. Now, when you thread it like this, you won't have to be breaking the chip as often either because you're taking lighter cuts. When you have a regular die on there, a solid die, you can only get like a quarter turn. You got to break the chip. You got to go back and forth. And again, that's another reason why the adjustable dies are so nice. It gives you a, uh, an easier, lighter cut. It's easier on the die, much easier to work. There we go. Let's take a look at these threads now. Again, when you're pulling this off, you don't want to bugger it. You, there we go. Let's try out the nut. Okay, now you see that it's tight. It's a tight fit, even though this is a nylock. It's the only one I have, but you see it's a tight fit. So we still, we would go just a little bit further to cut a little bit deeper. Here is the third pass. Now, I know this might seem like a lot of work to go through, but this is how adjustable dies work and this is why they're used for a lot of machinists use these instead of the standard button dies the button dies are kind of fit and finish and that's why they're so popular today is because it's one pass and you're done the only thing is you have to take the you have to throw them away after a few uses. okay here you see we brought it down to the line the indicator line that says that's the proper here's the nut quarter by 28 See how that spins on? Now there's a nylon on top, but that would go all the way down. See that nice fit? That's how you'd use adjustable dies. Okay, so in closing, as you can see, there are uh, many different ways to get the same result, especially when it comes to uh, threading. 
And uh, I hope this helps out some people, especially if you've never known anything about the split dies or whatever, or adjustable dies. Now it gives you a little bit of idea what's going on and why it's used. Years ago, a lot of times they would use it to get different fits of, of, a, of a bolt or a nut or whatever you're going to, uh, you could adjust the fit by using adjustables. So that's different. Next up real quick, I asked you um, last video to pick a color scheme. You know, we found that cast iron uh, planter and then we painted it up and I said, uh, everybody had different opinions. I was wondering what your opinion was. So I asked you to just put down a number and you did. Thank you very much for that. And as you could see, we have such a varied uh, response and, 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 and I don't know if you were doing it to be nice, but number five came in uh, at number one. But you want to know something funny? My favorite, after looking at that, I think my favorite might have been number three. I really uh, enjoyed that. I love the yellow ribbon of number three. But anyway, uh, it was a lot of fun. Thank you so much for participating. And uh, I hope you have a great rest of your week. We'll see you again on Friday. Take care now. Bye-bye.